It's Friday. Do you know where your IT guys are? We don't. It's Patch and Switch. And now two guys who don't understand what durable mugs mean. It's Friday. Do you know where your IT guys are? We don't. It's Patch and Switch. And now two guys who don't understand. <laughs> What's going Uh-oh. on? I hear uh, you somewhere. Yeah, that was a, a window I left open. That's crazy, man. Yep. It's I Patch think. and Switch now. There you go. You know what it is? This is what you get. This is what you get when you have a <laughs> cut rate announcer that you picked up on Fiverr yeah, to exactly. be able to do a voiceover. Exactly. I thought, you know, is, is the captions even working? I captions are working. Okay, so I thought I thought we were getting the guy from NPR that does... <laughs> I thought we were too. That does, uh, what's the name of that show? The new show that they do? I, I, um, I don't listen to NPR. So what? No. Oh, there's, there's a I'm hilarious those, new show. I'm one of those bad bad human beings hey, that man. don't listen to public radio. You got it. You know why I like public radio? Why do you it's like just like radio? CBC back up in Canada. That's why. It's because like CBC it. is public radio. It is, actually. Yes, it is. You know, it Good is. morning. Hey, I got my glasses on. I can you see. You got your glasses? Again. Can you see? I how can. How many so fingers am I holding? You've up? got three up. Okay. Uh, your thumb and your, f- and your pinky are curled over. All right. Um, but you're not uh, who was expecting here. Uh, we no, have to bring, I'm not. We, we, we brought up the um, audio engineer to be able to stand in for Mr. Joey. Yes. Today. Unfortunately, Mr. Joey is on a jet plane. Don't know when he'll be back again. He's... <laughs> I was about to start singing that. Yeah, I know. He's, but he's, he, has he left yet, I wonder? Do we know I, if he's left? I Talking with him, he w- said he would not have been landed in the North Americas. So he's probably somewhere over the Pacific Ocean right now. Exactly. Coming back from visiting Australia. Yes, the Oceania area. Yes, uh, down in that area. And he's doing some... Down on the- He was doing some um, partner stuff, as yes, his was. new role is. Yes. And the rest of us, you know, you're still looking after build servers, and I'm still looking after the infrastructure they run on. Yeah, well, I, I had a. We'll talk about that in one of the se- <laughs> sections here. I had, I've had a little bit of fun lately. So, nice. Yes. And but. so let me see here. Oh, oh, we got so, some people that are joining us here. Fantastic. The They're going. I don't have the video rolling, but I guess that's normal. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it rolled on we, my machine. We, we're still, <laughs> we're still trying to figure out the best uh, way to be able to bring this stream to you. Oh, look, see, no, there it is. No, it's off again. See, I don't know what it is. Okay. Um, uh, according to the TriCaster, I'm, we are running. I, I, I'm having some issues with uh, my <laughs> laptop build. I have to do a flatten. We we're talking about that earlier. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yes, we we were talking about that. And um, so I do want to call out specifically. I mean, the the announcer guy was talking about these things called durable du- mugs. Durable mugs. Durable mugs. Du- is, do they call it DuraWare or something like that? Dur- what, do they, what do the signs say? It said durable. There we go. So the building that we're in, where the secret bunker is housed, has recently changed over to eliminate, trying to eliminate as much waste as possible or zero waste. Right. 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 And so they've replaced all the coffee stations at all the different floors to actually have real. Real mugs. Real mugs. Or you can bring your own. Or you can bring your own. So my issue is I left my spill-proof mug in my Jeep (laughs) at the park and ride. It was full of beautiful Tim Hortons coffee because I have Tim Hortons coffee imported. Yes. uh, With Kylo and Ren. Every month comes in. Um, But uh, so now I came here and I have to use one of these durable mugs. It's a regular mug. The biggest issue I have with this one is that I know there is currently a Las Vegas pool going on to find out when Rick will spill the coffee on the table. Yes. It's there. So I'm going to try my best to put this as far away as possible, but still accessible to be able to drink, but then it misses all my hand motions we like need, this. I need to purchase some domain names, I think, this weekend. <laughs> clausing.ca, clausing.com. Do you mind uh, helping me get the CA one? Because you have to be a Canadian citizen to get CAs. Do you? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I have clause.ca. I know you do, but I want clausine. Clausine.ca. Yes. That can yes. work. That way we can get every time you do something on video. That could work. And we can post it. So let me see here. Yes, it looks like the stream is working. Yes, stream is, is working. Good. I see that. I actually found the super secret, super secret uh, way to look to be able to see um, uh, what's going on. The comments and likes and oh, okay. Oh, like, you're in the publisher tools. Yes, I am so in the publisher tools. We had a conversation before this even started with where we should be streaming, how we should be streaming, what we're doing. Exactly. And it comes down to you know some companies block Facebook. Some like, why would you block Facebook during working hours? Uh, I don't know. There's why. a there's a, I was in yeah. the medical field and yeah. there's a reason why you block Facebook. Yeah. Uh, and then also. 
you know, well, then we say, well, how about YouTube? But then YouTube is also blocked as well. Exactly. And then you suggested Mixer. And I'm like, people don't know what Mixer is. And there's a problem with that one. They're being blocked too, potentially. Or they've got some kind of stuttering going on with like 10 frames per second uh, audio. Okay. Who knows? So we are looking for efficient ways to be able to do this at zero cost as much as possible. Right. Because we our budget is spent on me. Right. And that's also keep, divided keep, by more. So I keep submitting invoices and I still have not been paid. I told you you have to go to I don't care dot com to go in and make your submissions, please. <laughs> okay. All right. And all that right. will look after that. I have to all reach right. to get my coffee. Now yeah. To get this. Hang on a second. Uh oh. Okay. A little ASMR. Come on, let's get the slurps in. Ah. Very nice. ASMR. It's not Tim Hortons, but it is okay. It'll 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 do. It'll caffeinate. It'll caffeinate. That's the important part. <laughs> As I drink decaf. Mm. You got it. So let's take a look to see who we have in the room here. Oh, we have Claire McKenzie has joined us. That's an interesting one. We haven't seen her uh, before. Nice. Welcome, Claire. It's not Tim We've got uh, oh, Mr. Pierre Homa, Jamie, Ban oh, Jamie Brandwood, Stephen Lane, Mr. John Marshall has joined us as well. Mark Fleming. Hey, man. Uh, Gareth has joined us as well. And uh, there's probably some other lurkers that are in there, too. Of uh, course. Jamie's actually joined us from the UK. Interesting. Wow. Evening evening watcher. He must uh, well. he must actually be off uh, at a pub having a pint. Possibly. I would like to be in a pub having a pint. I would, too. I'd, be, I'd love to be anywhere but here right now with you. Oh, nice. I'm sorry. Wait. Um. Nice. <laughs> Colleen's joins. Is that the one that he joins Colleen, always says yeah. that she's supposed to be working right yeah, now? Yeah, she's supposed to be working. Okay. Colleen, you're supposed to be working. We'll, we'll say that on Joey's behalf. And look at that. Harjeet has joined us as well. Well, from Vermont, I do believe. It's Vermont, isn't it? it I, I believe it is Vermont, and right. we want some uh, Vermont uh, maple syrup. Please. Got it. Send it on down. Send it on down. Look at that, man. Yeah. That's cool. Well, this is the Patch and Switch Show. This it's is. The, the geek talk radio that we do for about an hour, of just kind of having some fun talking about stuff that we're doing all over the place. We've got it, five segments to the show. Is it? Is it like the morning drive? Is this a morning drive? Uh, we don't have the guy that we pay to do laughs. <laughs> oh, that's normally That's me. normally you yeah, over there. Exactly. And that's yeah. over there. So we brought you up into the big leagues to be able to hang out. Well, you've exactly. been on the show a number of times. Yep. Uh, and so the first segment that we normally do is called From the Trenches. From the Trenches. What we've done for work recently that actually, you know, brings home the bacon that we actually get paid for as IT professionals yeah. and other things along the, along the way. What do you think, man? Have um, you been doing some work stuff recently? Cause, oh, yeah. You know, you've, you've been... Uh, You've been in charge of that new role now for a while. We've heard some yes. stories about things going on, but I, yeah. give us some real dirt. I'll give you give some us real some real dirt. Anonymize Stop. it so, to protect uh, the innocent. So, no, no, do, do I have to protect the innocent? Well, please? you should. Oh, okay, you should. Uh, for the uh, like, for those of you who may or may not know, I've moved on from Microsoft IT. I'm now over in VisualStudio.com, uh, Visual Studio Team Services. This Run segment brought to you by VisualStudio.com. For your. IDEs for everybody. IDEs for everybody. Now, see, I'm on the other side. It's oh, okay. not the IDEs. I'm I'm all in the web services. Like nice. The, oh, the 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 uh, work, work item tra uh, tracking. Okay. And, and uh, you know, uh, release and um, all that. Uh, my my primary team though is uh, around uh, in some internal systems here at Microsoft called Tools for Software Engineers. So we run the tools that build all the code. Right. And then we have a... The code. The code. The code. The code. We'll do, whenever we say code, we'll put it inside of quotes. Quotes. Yep. So when someone like OneDrive, they're building their apps that are on all the different devices, yeah. they submit their the actual code that they code to our build engine, and then it builds all the, the DLLs and the executables for them. Right. And we have a large system so that it's... Uh, uh, can take advantage of volume and size, and then they can share with other groups. So right. they work out. We work out which groups build at different times of the day, so that we can optimize, optimize the use of the everything. Use of the hardware. Yeah, we're also starting to, into using Azure Compute. In fact, uh, we, we had a talk with the Azure Compute folks, and I think you guys went away going, "Oh, <laughs> what do we, we get want ourselves a into? lot of resources." Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, one of the other things that uh, we support, though, my team. Uh, is sites like uh, msdn.microsoft.com, visualstudio.com, yeah. and codeplex.com, as a matter of fact. So I used to use codeplex.com a lot before I yeah. came to Microsoft. Right. And I just killed it. <laughs> <laughs> I was one of the, the people that helped to kill it. There were pr two primary people that did the work. You migrated the content elsewhere. We, we did. We archived it. We car archived it off, and it's now hosted on an Azure website with links to uh, download any of the projects as a zip file. Right. 
but you can't use codeplex.com as a project management site anymore for open source projects. We've we've worked around and actually a we've few modernized. We've modernized. And Brian and Henry actually even had a uh, uh, blog post about it and saying, "Hey, GitHub is a better place to do this." Mm -hmm. So we you know we are going to start shutting down our services. You should move your your projects to GitHub. Well, over the weekend, I was at SharePoint Saturday up in Utah. And I was in the speaker room getting my deck finalized and talking with a few folks. And I mentioned something about my new job and that, oh, yeah, I was just uh, working on the CodePlex stuff. And one of the guys across the table from me was like, oh, I forgot to move my project. Uh oh. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, you can download it. It's still so, there. It's still there. But he was more concerned that um, he didn't put a post on the project saying, I've moved to GitHub. So if you go to CodePlex.com and look up his project, right. it doesn't say go to GitHub. It, oh, okay. So he didn't make the update before we went read only. And he's like, is there any way you can slip that in? Like, no, I can't do it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's crazy. It is. So, so that was the big thing you did in the last two weeks. That was the big thing. That's Other, pretty major. Like, I feel inadequate now. Yeah. I, what did you do? Oh, uh, you know. You worked on stuff you can't emails. talk about. <laughs> I did that. That's, you know, the recurring theme that I have. Exactly. No, that was, it was, uh, been a lot of fun. In fact, uh, we just started a new sprint. My boss has really been pushing on. We've got like four main projects. I'm also working on another project where we have like eight servers. Yeah. And it's just a website. Why aren't we hosting this in Azure Web Apps? Right. So that's what we're doing. I've moved it. We just got to get final sign off from the owner, uh, possibly next Monday or Tuesday. And then we move it over. We shut off eight physical servers. Sweet. Yeah. Eight servers like we don't have to patch anymore. Oh, yeah. That's goodness. always good. Yeah. It's always or good. manage OS upgrades or manage Spectre and Meltdown updates and, ugh. yeah. Yeah. So my, I've been, my I've, whole month has been uh, Spectre and Meltdown. Yeah, so. <laughs> I've, I'm, still, I'm still dealing with Spectre and Meltdown uh, with my regular day job for stuff that's there. Um, I've been actually toiling around with playing with Terraform. You know what Terraform is? No, I don't. Uh, it's a, it's a automation, um, automation tooling solution that you can use. It's by HashiCorp that allows you to basically go off and call different providers to go off and do automation and deployment of different things. I'm sorry, I just saw our uh, uh, closed our captions. Closed captions yeah. that said you're, you're, you're tolling around playing with terror. Oh, nice. So I'm, I'm wondering what sort of terror you're Wait, playing with. Waiting for the NSA to come through the door right I now. I think the terror that you have unleashed on everybody is letting your son drive. Yeah. That's the terror. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> I'll make sure he gets that one. Yeah, um, I'll go tell him. Nice. <laughs> So uh, Terraform uh, basically allows you to go off into almost like a template, uh, go through, if you're familiar with ARM templates or Azure Resource Manager templates, go through and make a declarative statement about here's what I need to do to be able to build my system. And the neat thing is you can go off and obviously span different clouds on premises uh, inside of Azure, inside of AWS, inside of Google Compute, whatever it happens to be. And you can go off and you can configure different pieces to it, um, identify everything and simply say, okay, here is my script that's gonna be used for my Terraform script. And okay. Go ahead and say, deploy it. The neat thing I like about it though, is that it because it's a, a long script, it's able to go through and actually have status of each of the different components that are being made. Oh, wow. So you go through and you say, okay, this is what I wanna do, declare it all out. So literally you have to go through like the old fashioned way of I need to, make my resource group, I've got it in the Azure case, I can make my resource group, make my storage account, make it for able to work for that, make my network, make my IP on the network, go right. off and make my machine attached to the IP, attached to the storage, and you know, all sort of stuff you have to go through and declare. Um, say, but okay, it's able to go in do. and uh, make it so that you um, check to see if it has all the modules loaded. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, it goes off and loads the modules to the local machine that's running the Terraform script. Oh, neat. It then is able to go off and validate that different portions of it have run. If it is not run, it goes ahead and runs that chunk. And so if something happens in the middle of your deployment, three quarters of the way through, it knows exactly where it failed. Mm -hmm. So if you fix that issue and then you go run it again, it knows it's done the first 16 steps and doesn't even try to do it without any extra logic. Oh, it wow. then picks right back up again to the, the, the eighth step and then continues on from there. Okay. And it gives you a little timer for how long things have been running and things like that. So it's nice. rather cool. So I'm looking at that from a multi-cloud perspective to be able to play around and to see what you can do. Very cool. And I just discovered that we actually, and I should know this, because <laughs> the guy that's on my team five doors down from where I am is is responsible for making sure Terraform works well with Azure. Mm -hmm. uh, he's actually worked with the Apex folks to be able to create a Terraform landing spot for all of our Terraform resources on Azure. Oh, wow. I tweeted out the link a while ago. Uh, if you follow me at RicksterCDN on Twitter. 
Why would anyone um, want to do that? Would you turn off your email responses, please? I'm sorry. Like, this, the audio guy is actually having issues with audio off of his laptop. I don't understand what's going the, on. The audio guy is trying to do his job and yeah. help host. Yeah, nice. So... <laughs> Anyway, there's a whole Terraform resource available on Azure, as well as Terraform documentation on the Terraform site on HashiCorp nice. uh, to be able to do stuff. So, very, nice. very cool. Uh, the best part about it, though, is that some other stuff I was doing with my job, I'll just talk about it in just a minute, introduced me or reintroduced me to uh, Cloud Shell mm. by going to shell.azure.com. Nice. Have you been there? Not yet. Open it up. Oh, no, no, he's going to screw something up. <laughs> yeah. If you go right now to shell.azure.com, it actually is your authenticated uh, web login uh, enabled Cloud Shell console. Nice. Bash in the sky. Or, or PowerShell. PowerShell in the sky. That will actually go and completely configure and take up your full screen browser. And you can even embed that inside of a website if you wanted to. That is super awesome. I will point out, though, that not all the commands are there. Which ones? On you talking to Azure CLI or talking about PowerShell? Both. Well, it's updated on a bi-weekly, ba or on a fortnight every two weeks. Every fortnight. Well, my problem is we've been doing a lot of work with key vaults. Right. And not all the key vault commands are in the cloud shell. I have to actually use Bash or PowerShell on my local machine to use key vault. Oh, really. interesting. Yeah. I should make a note of that and you tell Justin should. to get, him, get his act together and yes. get the proper stuff in there. Because we don't want to always have to open, you know, now I have to open up a PowerShell or Bash on my local machine, connect up to the cloud. Do my Key Vault stuff because we're putting all of our certificates, all of our secrets into Key Vault. Cause it's, right. And um, we're actually automating almost all of our apps now automate pulling their secrets from Key Vault. Right. So then we don't even have to see them. And our internal SSL management system, our certificate management, yep. is now a <coughs> certificate provider to Key Vault. Oh. So you can actually automate... Like you can actually go in and say cycle the cert, and it'll recycle the cert, and then all of our apps will see. Oh, there's a new cert. Grab it. Nice. And then the, uh, um, I think it's uh, set to revoke the other one after 24 hours. So if you need to roll a cert, it's, it's like push button now. Oh, nice. Very in fact, nice. we're using Release Manager to do it. It's good, man. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I see that uh, Andy Sirowitz. Andy Sandwich. Andy Sandwich. Andy Sandwich. has joined us as well. It's Whee! been a while since we've seen him. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, Pierre has actually gone ahead and recommended the book Terraform Up and Running by O'Reilly. Some of the best stuff that's out there. Now, look, we got Golnaz waving at us too, eh? It's nice. It's, it's, yes. She's pointing out the fact that she did some cable management. Yeah. Very nice cable management down there. Yeah. It's cool. Except there's still not enough cable on the table. Yeah, did, you didn't stretch the cables. I asked you to stretch the cables, and you didn't stretch the cables. I don't know. It's eight. Hey, it's better. There's a microphone right there if you'd like to join in. She, she's supposed to... Um, I thought she was supposed to be in training over She's in Delta. training and, and uh, team bonding with Apex, I thought. She's over here after almost crashing a drone into the entire group. So uh, I think that's probably why they did <laughs> She's yeah. here. So uh, we were talking about uh, Cloud Shell yep. there. The Cloud tools Shell, that are in there. Awesome. It is maintained. It is awesome. Uh, I mentioned Cloud Shell because it actually includes the Terraform executables inside of it as well. Nice. Uh, as well as some Kubernetes stuff too. Ooh, uh, more pretty, stuff's coming. Pretty. Uh, but I used it because last week uh, there was a internal training conference for Microsoft that's called, used to be called Tech Ready. Yep. Now it's called Ready. Ready. And so we had, you know, 6,000 of our uh, IT staff and, and sales staff and technical staff across the board mm -hmm. from around the world came in to descend upon the mothership uh, to be able to go off and do some training. Yeah. I was there delivering some training. Where I now? delivered an instructor-led lab, ILL. Did you not? An ILL for doing... Uh, you were ill? I was not ill. <laughs> for you doing... Ill it was It was doing... Uh, I was doing some Linux demonstrations and Linux oh, setups. Neat. And believe it or not, folks didn't know about... Uh, Cloud Shell. They didn't know about uh, Windows Subsystem for Linux, how to install it, how to tune it to be able to work with the Azure CLI on wow. the local boxes, uh, and then obviously go ahead and, and provision machines and stuff like that. So yeah. it was well received. I have Bash on all my machines now. Of course. How could you not? You need to have WSL on there. I know, to but be able it's, to work done these it's days. like, oh my gosh, it's, it feels like forever this, ago. This is from the guy that if you cut me, I bleed blue, <laughs> as far as Microsoft <laughs> is concerned. But. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I've I've been embracing my inner bashness. Yes, I'm, I've been enjoying. I'm bashful. I guess. Bash. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying. So we're this, stupid dad jokes. Right? Yeah. Uh, should I'm we working on should it. we name this episode the stupid pun episode? <laughs> it could be. Okay. It could be. All right, just checking. I'm I'm actually kind of nervous with Golnaz in the room. I don't know why. <laughs> it's like why are you we're, nervous we're, with we're Golnaz? Perfor we're performing in front of our producer. It's like it's kind of crazy. The executive it's, producer. Of I know. Course. It's Executive. craziness. 
juggle for me. I know, juggle. juggle. <laughs> hey, I'm juggling this cup. This is the, new. The, I'm, I'm not used to this stuff. These cups are going to, like, especially with him. Durable it's, wear. This it's is going to be. Look at this. It's going to, like, fall over in, like, three seconds. It's too yeah. easy. So I have to put it out of reach. Yes. Out of harm's way. Yes. And grab it again. There we go. There we go. Got it. All right. I got a new sticker. Did you? I did. You see this down here? Right there. Keep, it says, it says, keep calm. calm. It works on my work machine. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's true. It does. I don't even want to go there right now because all I've heard the past couple of weeks, luckily it wasn't me because I'm not the person, uh, the directly responsible person on my team. Somebody else has been, but uh, we've had several teams that have done. But it worked yesterday. Did you do any code changes? Well, yeah. Well, that's probably why it doesn't your work. Yeah, your code's perfect. It's got to be the build environment. You got it. <laughs> Always good. Always good. Always good. But no, uh, so what else uh, have you been doing other than teaching labs and teaching labs building stuff things i can't talk about right uh and then also just recently um uh doing the uh what am i talking about terraform playing yeah, out terraform, terraform. Stuff. okay that was the that was the one thing you were trying to tell me about the other day yeah yeah okay. that's the fun stuff all right cool i like the fact that i have time that i can set aside to be able just to learn something it's helpful um, and then it also is helpful. It doesn't have to happen all the time after work. It can happen sometimes during, during hours work. Yeah. when I'm not being scheduled. Yeah. I put a, I put a tweet up a little while ago about how I was feeling recently because it seems like just the, I was running into a spat of almost like when I was a remote worker back in Canada years ago mm -hmm. where I would always join the, the meeting mm -hmm. and I'd be the only one in the room yep. virtually. So it says, looks like you're the only one here. Like yeah. I want to edit that text. I want to be able to put in new text and have random quotes or something like that come that up for what they are. Talk, talk to the Skype guys. See if we can do see. something like that. Talk and then, of Skype. course, people are saying, well, you should be using Teams. They're always in Teams now, aren't they? And I'm like, I haven't even used a, a audio or video sync inside of Teams as of yet. Yeah, have I you? haven't either. No, I haven't used Teams yet either. Um, there's a couple of people on my team uh -huh, that well, have been forced She's leaving. We bored her. She okay. lasted a total of 7.3 minutes. Yes, exactly. Perfect. Yep. Uh, no, we've been used. Uh, they're now forced. They've been actually blocked from Skype. They now have to use Teams for everything. Oh yeah. So it's interesting to see there. You know, there is some subtle differences in Teams that they have versus the Teams that I have because they're more integrated with Skype and stuff. Right. But it's still there's some work that needs to be done. Hey man, transitioning yeah. project. Oh yeah. I, I think I, I think I, I know the PMM for that. I actually know a few folks over in that area. Yes. On the PMM side or PM side? PM side. I know the PMM side. Okay. Um, I don't know what the PMM stands for. I'll have to go take a look at MSW. Product Marketing Manager. Oh, PMM. Yeah. Actually, I do know a few people in the PMM over there. Yep. In fact, uh, yeah. So this past weekend at SharePoint Saturday, Utah, I actually talked on Teams. You talked? I did a. I hour. thought you were in Utah. Why would you talk on Teams? Well, no. I talked about Teams. Oh, I talked about. But about, 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 about Teams. About Teams. Yes, I talked about Teams for an hour. And it was like a one-on-one. And the interesting thing was talking with folks, a lot of people, you know, I put up there basically like the, what, what it isn't. And it said, it's a, you know, it's, it's a ver is a Microsoft version of Slack. Eh. Nope, it's not. It's it. There are some things that are similar, but it's not anything it's slack -ish. like Slack-ish. Slack-ish. The portions. only thing that's Slack-ish is the channel communication. Everything Channels. else. And apps. You got apps in there, too. Yeah, well, they, I, I haven't played much with Slack, so I don't know everything. But, right. uh, uh oh, see, that, so now, 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 now she's, she's left the room physically. Us. Now she's watching us at our now desk. Now she's remotely watching us. I That's know. even more scary. It's almost like they're, if there were only cameras that were turned on, right? No kidding. It'd be crazy they got yeah. to see us in here. But, no, I, I had a really good, and it was a good uh, discussion. Unfortunately, I couldn't show, like, my teams. So team you channel. created a whole session around teams? Yes. Are you going to well record received. this and make it available to people? Uh, no, got I'm not. Got some demos you want to share? This. I've got some. Well, I've got some information I could share. Yeah, but you got to make some art. Do you, some blog posts, I guess. Create some artifacts. Do you have a yes, blog? I have. <laughs> I have a blog I haven't posted on in three years. That's about right. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> my blog has become a total post to Tuesdays with Corey. Exactly. It, you're you no longer have a blog. It's I, I, Tuesdays it's, with Corey. It's basically Corey's blog. Com. I don't know how that happened. It just sort of happened. Craziness. It's because you let him record all those things on yeah, with you. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's, How many I, times I got do we a, not have beer because you're like, I got to go record with Corey. <laughs> it's funny because I got a <laughs> uh, I got a comment on one of the episodes, and they're saying, "Why is the camera moving? Is the guy in a boat?" And uh, I responded <laughs> back to the comment, and I'm like, "No, it's because I I hire Rick to <laughs> hang onto the phone to be able to do the exactly. recording." 
Uh, Do you have a stabilizer the, yet? I don't. None of those, those stable. Well, I use software stabilization. I know, but you need to get one of those. Uh, Different days, I got better anchor points. This time, I was sitting down, so I don't have much of an anchor point. You just got to kind of have your your arms relaxed. Yeah, to be exactly. Able to I feel like I'm just but, jumping. But you know, I the you know I, I was just, just in Salt Lake City last weekend and flying flying back. No joke, there were four dogs on leashes, like people just walking dogs, and you know, they had the little service animal vests, but they didn't look like real service animals. I mean, oh my God. It's such a scam, dude. Uh, it's killing me, well, you all know. these things. And my, like my brother in law's totally allergic to dogs. Yeah. So, he, I mean, he'd be having a tough time on that flight, just, you know, it was a smaller jet, one of the smaller Embraer E 175s. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Embraer. So you're, Embraer. 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 Yeah. Embraer. Yeah. <laughs> but it was one of the smaller jets. So, I mean, you know, and then there was the uh, comment uh, I, sh- I saw on Twitter about the uh, peacock. Peacock lady. The service peacock that hey, was prevented from the United flight. If I could bring my 92-pound lap dog, yes. it would work out well. Well, and then there's the, uh, I'd like to bring my uh, emotional support hamster next flight. Can you imagine if that support hamster actually, like, yeah. got out? Yeah, I know. Exactly. Or, with, or, like, or the peacock, or, or the, the, the the emotional support hamster would be eaten by the emotional support python that someone brings in for snakes on a plane. Exactly. So there like, we go. Snakes, like gonna, snakes, service snakes on a plane. <laughs> service snakes on a plane, followed by peacocks and emotional support hamsters. Exactly. I want my I want my uh, emotional support rhinoceros, please. Yeah. Or, so you could literally go on to your favorite online shopping site and probably purchase the uh, support, support uh, animal yeah. animal thingy. And I'm not saying they aren't like needed. <laughs> I actually know some, you know, a good close friend. She's going through a lot of pain, and yes, her her when when she has her little Chihuahua, she is in less pain because yep. it just it provides a lot of emotional support. So I totally get it. Yep. But come on. They've got I know a lot on. of people. I know. I actually know people that have said, "Oh yeah, I put the little vest on them just so I don't have to, you know, put them in a cage, in a kennel, in a kennel." It's like at least put them in the little kennel. Don't you know? Anyway, rant over. Rant over. <laughs> nice. It it's, was just. It was just one of those things. I was just like, "Oh my goodness." So you've never taken one before? Nope. I've never. Well, when we moved here, we had to get our we had to get riley transported down but yeah. that was a whole other deal he was more expensive to fly down than the yeah. whole family was yeah i've i've actually flown an animal before but they traveled in the car could you could you say could you say you have emotional support like food <laughs> like you know how you can't bring food on a plane could you say that like you, this is my emotional you, support bottle of scotch you know you can't <laughs> serve yourself alcohol which is like come on i'm, I'm yeah i'm self-medicating <laughs> Speaking of scotch, I want to check my scotch. <laughs> yes. It's gone. What? It's gone. What? We've been sampling it so much, or it evaporated over the summer. <laughs> or a teenager figured out have... where it was, one or the other. If it's the teenager, we're going to have words. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know what happened to that. It's Uh-oh. crazy. All right. Uh, oh, look at that. Brian Bourne has joined us. Good day, hey, sir. Brian. He's taking a break from working on his race car. Excellent. Always good to see. Nice. Gareth, nice. not bad. It allows for dogs or cats up to 22 pounds. So that obviously will not work for uh, my Riley, who is 92 pounds. 92 pound lap dog. Yikes. Craziness. Yeah. How about, um, well, you're in Utah. You weren't visiting relatives. You're there. You're no. there strictly for SharePoint Saturday. Well, did, you, did you get approached for beer money? That's our next segment, by the way. Beer money, which is the uh, tech support you do for friends and for family um, for free. I have not been approached by them. However, I was approached by family. While you're for, away? While, all the time. Okay. Like, I, I actually got a worried text message or email message yesterday morning at like 6.30 a.m. on the way to the gym from my mother. My Cause, banking Because she's, three three, she's three hours ahead, Yeah, right? she's three hours ahead. Yeah, she's on the Eastern time zone, so, you know. She hasn't um, figured out time zones yet? Yeah. Not gonna go there. Nice. <laughs> and she said, "My my banking website's asking for my location. What do I do?" Well, at least she's asking. That's I know. good. That's good. And it's like, banking website. Come on. You have don't... you have you seen some of the uh, phishing? Um, oh yes. Logins that they oh, have now yes, yes, for yes. even live services for yes. Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Uh, they look pretty darn good. They're quite impressive. And they're getting uh, really good URLs. That yeah. they, hide it. They, they actually, Better. I saw there was even an internal email warning some people oh, yeah. about, hey, 
Just, just so you know, watch out. We have changed what it looks like, but make sure you're checking that URL. I um, actually got, what was it, three weeks ago, I got fished by the company. by Oh, by the red team. By the red team. That's nice. And I reported it. Nice. And I got commendation for reporting. Nice. You get a free sucker. Here yes, you go. exactly. You're not, nice. <laughs> you get a free not a sucker. Yeah. Because you're not a sucker. Now, did you know what happens if you don't report it and you go? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because somebody I know did that was well no was asked by several teammates hey what is this so he used their URLs which had their names in it oh nice because <laughs> he really recognized the uh, URL had their aliases in it yep so yeah he went to those sites as them and they got dinged for it nice and they're like wait we didn't do it he did it nice <laughs> even worse you gave the URL to somebody else yeah, well, and somebody good. else who's a security person who was like he -he. Yeah. very cool stuff yeah so but uh, no, I, I was, uh, so, did so, that. So you warned your your mom about using location services. Yeah, I told okay. her to deny. It. Well, I told her to deny it. They Why? don't need it. Well, the whole point on the banking website is to tell you where their ATMs are. She knows right. where their ATMs are. You never know. A new one might have opened up just down the street. Yeah, New York. You know how much money that is. <laughs> <laughs> Come <Okay>. on, man. <laughs> so especially on the island. Nice. So what else? Um, but then I was also helping another friend who was trying to figure out why they couldn't get, an, you know, why they were disconnected from the internet. And I'm doing this on the plane home from Salt Lake City All right. on iMessage. I'm sitting there and they're trying to send me pictures. I'm like, it's blocked. You can't send that to me. I'm, <laughs> I'm on a plane. I'm on a and plane. What it ended up being. With a peacock. With a peacock, yeah. <laughs> Four dogs. <laughs> More animals than I've seen in years. They're nice. all in one plane. Nice. <laughs> um, yep, pheasant. I want the emotional support pheasant. <laughs> Well, then you're going to have all the hunters that or bring duck. their guns online are going to go off and try or to duck. shoot the pheasant. Oh, yeah. Or a duck. Especially one that says Aflac. Nice. Anyway, uh, so she, she's sitting there trying to you know, ask me you know, how to do this. And come to find out, they put a new router in. So she moved her, the router. Who did? To, it's a, a non-technical friend of mine. So they bought like a new router. Yeah, yeah. And then they put the, rout, the router in another room and, of course, connected it up like it's, you know, they plugged it into the internet. Yeah. And it's like, no, you need to get a switch. <laughs> Go get a switch. Stop <laughs> using a router. Well, did they put the router behind the old router? Yes. Oh, so they had the old router and then a new one that they just And they couldn't in. understand why they couldn't get on the internet so with now, the old one. Now they're double natting. Yeah. So that's exactly. lovely. Exactly. Probably yeah. with the same address range. Yes, knowing most exact of the same so, range. So 192.168.1, talking to 192.168.1, kind of goes off yeah. and never comes back. Exactly. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. That wouldn't work. No, it didn't. That wouldn't work. So... Um, told them to go get a switch, and they're like, "Get a what?" I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I sent them the link to Amazon. Here, get this. <laughs> uh, yes, that's rough, man. Yeah. Uh, beer money wise, for myself, has been rather light for the last little while. Um, so no I, beer then? Well, <laughs> it's funny because now you know, my kids now know that <laughs> when they have a problem, they actually have to log a ticket before I'll answer them. <laughs> Uh, and so I had my daughter log a ticket because there was a problem with her laptop. But it's a school laptop, which is, to their credit, extremely locked down. Good. To the point where you can't install most home printer drivers oh, because God. there's too much stuff that goes with the home oh, printer drivers. Printer drivers. So yes. luckily I have a enterprise-style printer at my house that's very old that doesn't have all that extra crap that mm -hmm. actually advertises... With, what's, what's the printer? Uh, WSP. WSP or, or yeah, w, uh, WPA? Or? No, WP. Uh, Windows Printer Services. Yeah, yeah. so it, it advertises with lovely GUID ID or whatever it happens yes. to be. Yes. And then machines can find it and know what to do with it and yeah. just simply go on. So I told her how to do that, which is good. Uh, but then, like, randomly, again, she pulled the laptop out of her bag and she was trying to do something for schoolwork. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't, wouldn't connect up to the Internet, wouldn't connect up to the wireless. I'm like, so. That's aggravating. When's the last time you restarted it? Mm -hmm. Because and it's probably just been in sleep mode and open and sleep mode and open and sleep mode and open for the last yep. week and a half. Uh, restart, it worked, of course. Of course. And that's all good. She, and she came up to me and she said, why, why, why do I have to reboot things to make them work? And, and how do you know this? I'm like, welcome to the world of IT. Sometimes exactly. it just works that way. And uh, then she said, well, can you do the same thing for the internet sometimes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, no, not unless I'm uh, paying a lot of money to some kind of uh, botnet. On the, exactly. On the, some rough, Russian site. Well, and, and the thing that a lot of people don't understand, and I've been running into it actually with my own personal Surface Pro 4. If I don't reboot it ever, the IP addresses will switch from auto to manual. And like yeah. when I 
get home from being someplace else, I'll have the last IP address from wherever right. I was at. I won't be on auto to get a new IP from my house. Right. And so I, can, I don't connect. And for, for the longest time, I was having the biggest problems with it. I pointed this out to the Windows team, and, and I, literally I felt like I got the reply of, huh, never seen that before. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> and I gave him the exact steps what to do. And the guy got back to me like, yeah, I was able to repro this. This is a... This is a this is a stinker. I'm like, the, what do we do? And he goes, Well, you're doing the right things for now. I'm like, I have to go in and reset it. Every, you know. Nice. So I've learned to basically at least a couple days a week do a full shutdown and then power it up. <laughs> I know. It so boots I, so fast though. Anyway, it's like whatever. And plus, you're missing firmware updates, you're missing driver updates, and all sort of stuff. Yeah. So it's it's uh, it's helpful. Brian's wondering what ticketing platform you're using. It's um, service now. It's a web based one. Are you seriously using a web-based ticketing system? <laughs> seriously? No, the ticketing the ticketing is actually just very simple. It's low tech. It's called a post-it note. They write it on the post-it note, put a random number on it, and they stick it on the wall. There you go. Little did I know the random number is the order that he's going to fix it in. But the funny thing is, I've actually got my significant other and friend for life. My wife actually set, tells her, "Did you file a ticket now?" Oh wow! <laughs> to my daughter. Because she knows. But uh, also on the beer money thing, um, <laughs> you, you know how they have, even on Facebook, they have these different neighborhood groups yeah. where they kind of make the geography and they say, this is our group and you must live with inside this geography to join this. Yeah, and then right. on there, you got people ranting about how some dog peed on their lawn or something like that. Right. Like a big white fluffy. Yeah. Oh. No, no, not mine. Not mine. <laughs> um, so is it the small one? <laughs> Uh, so they, they uh, someone just ran to me on the group that she belongs to, that I belong to, was looking for someone to assist with their laptop because there's a problem with their laptop. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, did you volunteer me because you know her? Uh, she, she didn't respond. <laughs> so I might have a new ticket waiting for me at home oh, uh, goodness. to be able to go off and help. Yes. She's getting the hard drive failure message, no boot device found. Yep. So the drive might be dead. Hopefully oh, yeah. not. But uh, she's looking to resurrect it long enough to be able to get the data off it. And and you know what? If you, if, if it's a laptop, at least that you can get to the drive, pull the drive out and just oh, yeah. connect it up. Yeah. Uh, normally, if you pull it out, put it inside an external case temporarily yeah, and exactly. then plug it in, it can work. And then buy a new uh, blazing fast SSD drive to replace it and look like a new laptop. Gareth is uh, telling us that you should have a bot that does things like, have you tried rebooting? And um, <laughs> it, can, it could name the beer money bot, Rick bot or beer so, bot. So if I could come up with a tech support bot that fits into Snapchat, it would work for my kids. Or a ticketing system that plugs into Snapchat. Can you there imagine? is an API there. I know. we got to figure that. Is I wonder if there is like a, a Snapchat tech support ticket bot. There's something, something like that. else. There's got to be out there. There's some, be that something sounds like there. a good project to be able to work on. Because that would absolutely And possibly work. a good project to work on, yeah. too. And, and by the way, if anyone actually has a recommended, super simple web-based ticketing system that I could use that for free. That connects to Snapchat. That connects to Snapchat. Let me know, please, in the comments. Exactly. I would appreciate that. Uh-oh. Yeah. Peter Gray has joined. Sean Logan has joined. Welcome, folks. Nice to see you. Uh, Peter Gray. There's... A first the name I haven't heard in a long time. And uh, it's uh, Brian Bourne has actually offered to host such a ticketing service if uh, anyone Is wants he? to make one. So that's well, nice. There we go. That's very cool. Very nice of you, Brian. Thank you so much. Yep. Do you know Brian, by the way? I do not. Brian is a guy that's up in Toronto. Is he related to Jason? Toronto? No, he's not. Uh, Jason Bourne. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to. <laughs> I can't picture that. Uh, no, he's awesome. He's one of the founders. Now of, I've got the theme music rolling in the back yeah, of my head. He's, he's one of the founders of um, a security conference up there yeah. uh, called Sector, ah, among, okay. amongst other things. Very cool. Nice amongst to meet you, Brian. Things. Cool stuff. That was beer money. Was as beer you money. know, our transitions are not as smooth. Uh, Joey's <laughs> normally the trans. Well, actually, exactly. Joey somehow transitions. I'm the one that reminds him what each section is. Yeah. But he's the one that actually does the transitions. Yeah. And because he's also got the uh, uh, sound effects. That works too. And I don't. So uh, I'm the, an audio guy without the sound effects. The, the next segment that we normally <laughs> talk about on this show is called beer talk. Beer talk. Beer talk this time, and this is normally when Ludwig. Uh, will will tune out and go elsewhere. Hi, I've, Scott. I haven't seen if he's actually joined or not. So I haven't I seen if he has either, but uh, we can sure take a look. Yeah, he was last time I saw him online. He was complaining or at least mentioning, as I'm sure all of us have done, 
about how potentially it's very frustrating when someone shows up and says, oh, by the way, I need a user account and email address for this new person that started at work today. Can yeah. you give them? They started two weeks ago. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yes. That's sort of fun stuff. Uh, but uh, Beer Talk yes. is where we talk about beer-related beer. uh, issues because yes. everyone seems to like beverages of the uh, barley kind. Um, did you have any Beer Talk recently, man? I did a little bit, actually. What'd you do? I, I went to a brew pub up in salt lake city that was wonderful they had several wonderful beers oh yeah and i actually went there with our friend az growler guy mr art hogarth is is that the place where you posted the pictures that has the ex explanation of beer across the outside mural it's actually yes it, it uh, had the outside murals and then also it had the msds chart card for right. beer for those of us that don't know what is an msds it is a material safety description i can't remember what the other s is it's it's those Tr uh, those the cards four, that the have four the, like, color, the, the four, four color, color thingies. triangle or a uh, square that's on points. Yeah. And it has a, you know, normally it's like a, how caustic is it? Is it flammable? Blah, blah, blah. And it had some interesting <laughs> entries on it. So it was, it was an entry for <laughs> beer specifically. Yes. Yes. Uh, but it uh, didn't follow the uh, normal uh, kind of things. I'll, I can grab the picture. It had, instead of, you know, like it had health hazard, fire yeah. hazard and reactivity. Oh, nice. But the definitions were way different. Because it was like it's a health hazard of four. Uh, level four is passed out. Nice. Yes. And I like I like the one where it says fire. What? I'm on fire? Yeah, that's the four on the <laughs> that's, on fire hazard. That's me. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and you know, protective uh, equipment required: respirator for bad gases, apron, boots, painkillers, and a bucket. Nice. Yes. Very nice. So, yeah. well well adorned. But more importantly, how was the beer? Uh, what the did beer, you have over I, there? I actually had a porter that was absolutely amazing. Oh yeah. Um, called Polygamy Porter. Nice. And then... Uh, Polygamy Porter. Yeah, exactly. Um, my uh, Art, our, our friend Art, had a cask. Uh, I believe it was a stout. A cask stout? Yeah, so it was served on a cask instead yeah. of... Gravity-fed Gravity pump. Gravity-fed uh, pump. That was amazing, except it was probably about five or five to eight degrees over the temperature it should have been served at. But that's the problem with casks. You can't cool it. So. Steve Lane corrected us. Material safety data sheet. Thank you, Steve. The one pager safety. on it's how dangerous pager. that is. Yep. It's got to be a one pager. <clears throat> yes, Knighted. exactly. Um, it was uh, some really good beer. Yes, Pierre, in Utah. There's a really good craft beer. Now, did you have to join a club to be able to get into that no, one? No, no. They've is, changed isn't a lot that what of they laws. Do? Changed a lot of laws. Because this is I've never been to Utah. This I, I never thought you actually had to join a club to That was the old consume. that's old that's Utah. That's the old Utah. So now so in this case Isn't that where Novell is based? I believe so. I think it is. I think it is. Interesting. Um so uh at least from what I understood through the weekend, if you're at a restaurant that serves <coughs> food and they have a full liquor license, if it's a if it's a restaurant you don't. Uh, you just have to um, just go ahead and consume. Con consume. Um, if you're at, well, no, you have to buy food. Yeah. This was a brew pub, so they could serve beer. But they also had a full liquor license. Um, you could order beer if you ordered liquor. You had to buy food. I don't know. They've got some weird things. If you go to what's a tavern or yeah, uh, you know that's bar, you know if you will a bar, you uh, have to. Um, show ID and they have to scan every ID. Huh. And I mean, they, the guy actually had an app on his phone that was taking pictures of everybody and it wasn't like the front ID, it was the back barcodes. Oh yeah? So they know exactly who's been to that bar and when and oh, how nice. long. Um, and uh, so, yeah, they had all these weird laws and it, I, I, I had no clue on what to do, but we ended up going there for, we had a beer pretzel with beer cheese. <laughs> nice. Really good. Their menu looked outstanding. Unfortunately, I ate... Uh, Mediocre breakfast at the hotel and wish I hadn't because their menu was amazing. It was called uh, Squatter's Pub. It's in downtown Salt Lake City. This segment brought to you by Squatter's, Squatter's Pub. Squatter's Pub. Mmm, beer. <laughs> um, but they had some really good beers. He uh, got an IPA, of course, that I could smell the hops from my seat. So it was like a double or triple hopped IPA. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> it was just like, Argh. Nice. Yeah. Beer talk wise for yes. myself. Um, are, are you doing something with beer? Uh, yes, actually. So I've been, for the most part, the only one that has time to be able to brew beer. Yes. So I've got uh, four on tap now. Mm -hmm. and Any scotch ales? Just kidding. No scotch ales because I'm leaving that one for you. I know. To be able to make. 
Um, and uh, I was actually deciding and have contributed to, or not, I've signed up for the National Homebrewers Competition. By the, what? Amer- by the the American Homebrewers Association, the AHA. Okay. Um, I have signed up and have been admitted to submit three bottles of beer, three styles of beer. Three bottles uh, of beer. On the wall, and I am going to be beer. putting in my, uh, I can't call it award winning because it's not award winning yet, my clogger. Your clogger. My Kelly's lager is the going clogger. in. So the clogger. So it has nothing to do with clogs. Right. And that one there okay. is being entered into what's known as the Hell's, Hell's, or Hell's, uh, <laughs> Hell's. <laughs> Hell's uh, Bells. <laughs> Hell's Goodness Lager uh, is going in uh, okay. for that one there. That's one of the categories. Gotcha. The second beer is I'm calling the Canuck Honey Brown. It is a clone modified recipe for uh, all you Canadians out there called Sleeman's Honey Brown, ah. which is a brewery that used to exist back in the 1800s that was then uh, resurrected again by some folks that uh, left Upper Canada Brewing to join and create their own Sleeman's Brewing. Gotcha. Uh, anyway, really nice honey brown that's on there, which is uh, good. And then also the third one is my Rick's Rye IPA. Remember that one there? Yes, I remember that one. So that comes off as a specialty IPA category, which mm-hmm. is uh, admitted as well. Okay. So what that means is basically I now have to go in and uh, fill up, I want to say, about six bottles a piece or four bottles a piece, label them with the appropriate labels, and then ship them off to Oregon. Wow. Uh, sometime between March 19th and March 30th for when the judging starts. Dang. The neat thing I did it for mainly was so that I could get some feedback on the beer. Yeah. See how it is. Yeah. I think it's good. So those are the three that are going in. Excellent. And I had to pay my whopping $40 to be able to uh, have them contributed. And we're good to go. Nice. So that's the, my beer escapades so far. Your beer escapades. My beer escapades is just drinking and buying that's memberships good. for it's friends. A, it's a good Christmas. way to go in and contribute to the, yes. to the sport. And, you know, we need to take advantage of their mug clubness now amongst the... Uh, I still haven't picked up my swag. I know you haven't. I need to go down and pick up my I, swag. I need, I need Apparently they refreshed it and I need to go back it, in. It, it, it's some awesome swag, actually. Right. Yeah. You need to so this it. is the swag that we, we joined the club. The Bellevue Brewing. Bellevue Brewing Company Club. Yes. Right. Mug Club. The BBCC. BBCC. <laughs> Well, and we we, we have a conference room there that we call the conference room BBC. Yep. We need to have more meetings there. I think we do. Actually, I've had uh, talking with my team. Some of the some of the members were like talking about doing some design meetings, and one of them brought up, "Hey, we should really do this as like a brewery because we all like beer." I'm like, I like this team. <laughs> I happen to know a place. Yep. So they've talked about wanting to do Malton Vine, and I brought up uh, Bellevue Brewing, and I'm like, hey, if we get enough. Uh, we buy enough beer and food we could have one of the back rooms and actually have like a design meeting in the room you have a table you mm-hmm. got um you can connect projector the projector yeah close exactly. the door exactly that could all work it could it really could so we'll see beer Fun talk stuff. beer talk we should let we should let ludwig back in there yes we again. should okay scott time to come back yep come back uh the next one is random spending oh my god random spending is always good yes it is hey look nick Lagalante joined us. Nice to see him. I haven't seen him in a while. Alan Doran, nice to join you. Thank you for coming out. Yeah. Um, random spending. I've got some random spend. You've already talked about the mouse, so you can't talk about that yeah. again. Although yeah. you know, this is, how much was that? Was, yeah, well, it, it's the, the internal pricing. Internal right? pricing was. So, uh, is it? Yeah. Is it? I don't want to start pressing buttons on it because it's probably yeah. going to turn something off. Yeah, right exactly. Uh, or or so, you could break it. So I got. I, I, I got. <laughs> I got given a Surface Mouse, which huh? is the flat, collapsible one, yeah. Bluetooth-wise, yeah, yeah. which yeah. is quite good. I needed that for last week to be able to present because exactly. you can only have one USB port on there. I know. Yeah. I actually have. Ooh. I. Uh, I have. I've updated my. Um, grid it with a whole bunch of new things. Your what? My grid it. Oh, the grid it. Okay. Yeah, I've got a I've got a grid it that's about uh, eight and a half, uh, I think it's eight by eleven or something, eight by ten. Yeah. And I have a whole bunch of cables in there. I've updated the cables to get rid of some older ones. Got some newer ones in it. Yeah. But I got a USB three uh, hub to use with my Surface when I need more than one USB. Correct. And it's beautiful. It's a little one, and it's uh, looks almost like a uh, it's about three quarters of an inch of uh, square, and then it's about I want to say three and a half, four inches long. A little pigtail. Yeah. And then on the bottom of it is a Ethernet port. Right. And it's a standardized Ethernet it's chipset. It's the same thing you had before, dude. It did, but that thing was big and wide, and this is a lot smaller, so and it's USB 3. They've miniaturized it and USB 3 it. Yes. 
So now I have USB three. Affiliate 3. links required. I I, think, I, I, to, I guess uh, I should post on yeah, my blog. I think I'll need to have. <laughs> I gotta post on my blog. That means someone's reading your blog, yeah, though. No. So, yeah, uh, I need to get something like that. I know. I've, I've, the funny but, part is my app insights for my blog. Yeah. It's like last week you had zero visitors. This week you had zero visitors. I'm like, what? Nobody <laughs> wanted to visit my blog. Nice. <laughs> I know why. Yeah. So I was gonna show you what I bought, but I can't because it's 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 at home. Uh, I bought some of the tiles. You know what the tiles are? Yes, I do know what the, the tiles are. The location devices. Yes, yes very nice. Uh, I bought a four-pack of tiles, um, and the idea is that it uses crowdsourcing of location yeah. as well as a cloud service to be able to log where your tile last was. So have you hidden so, them on your children? So my, <laughs> <laughs> so my phone and my wife's phone are both have the app on it and paired up with the tiles. Mm -hmm. And that way we did that because um, my, my, my wife did some random spending recently. What did she spend? <laughs> she bought a new cross truck. She bought a what? She needed a, we needed a new car. <laughs> so she, she picked out, I completely left it all up to her. She picked out and she got herself a cross truck. It's a beautiful um, car. It's, it's a beautiful, a wonderful car. car. Yeah. I, I highly encouraged her to so, buy it. So she loves it. She did take your advice, and she yep. did. She tried out a bunch of different ones, and she liked the Crosstrek too. But I'm not allowed to drive it. But we don't. <laughs> I wonder why we don't want to lose the keys. Right. And so she right. said, "Why don't we get one of those tracker things?" And I'm like, yeah. "Well, it's like what, ten bucks, twelve bucks, or something yeah. like that." So I uh, figured it out, got it all installed. It's all great. So it's all there. So now we have both of those keys set up with tiles. <laughs> I have my motorcycle keys and also my Jeep key put up with nice. tiles as well. Nice, nice, nice. I'm trying to figure out though, am I supposed to have them all in the same account and then have multiple? Logins across five devices for the family members, or do I not? I like it's know. the same thing. Like you know what it is. Same it's like, problem. We should have a blog that basically talks about how to use all these different technologies inside of a family environment with more than one person. Like Tile is set up to basically be used by I one should, person. I should be same the thing with of this. same thing. <laughs> oh, wait, I live alone. You live alone with one person. Um, Yikes! Um, but uh, awkward. Yeah. The. Uh, the same thing applies for the Amazon uh, Echo or the Cortana speaker or the Google Home device. Google Home device supposedly recognizes two people, uh, at least. But um, you know, same thing. Like how do you? Oh, Scott Legwood joined. He did join back after we yes, finished talking about beer. Exactly. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, like how, what's the best way to do it? So um, that was my random spend was the tiles devices. Gotcha. But I have another random spend that I'm very excited about okay. that I just talked about the other day. It's got it right here. Here, this right there. What the heck is that? That's how big it is. This is, is the GoPro of audio. Oh, good God. For you audio geeks. This is a uh, self-contained uh, streaming and locally recording microphone that you can, I've got the magnetic clip on it, basically put onto your clothes. I like don't this. want you anywhere near me anymore. There we go. Anything I Just say like can that. and will be used against no, me. No, it's not used, it's used for podcasts. It's used for audio record or gorilla recording like I do with my phone. And basically, this is now all self-contained Bluetooth speaker that does streaming uh, that also records locally if you wanted to as well. And this, I, I, I'm triumphant about this because um, this was uh, two years before I got it. So this is my second successful Indiegogo slash Kickstarter. Oh my goodness, okay. <laughs> and I'm happy. Like the guy that organized this, yeah. Brilliant guy, awesome yeah. guy. Okay, but just you know the woes of everything that goes through those processes of you know manufacturing in China and getting uh -huh. shipped over here and oh, all yeah. sort of stuff. But anyway, phenomenal luckily, device. Luckily, my in, uh, my Kickstarters have have come through relatively quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So so picture this, but you can get like five or six of them uh -huh. on individual musical components on the stage. They're very subtle for what they are. Uh -huh. They all come to your phone and you can control the levels on your phone like a mixing board okay. to be able to do the records. Okay. So, awesome. It's not meant for spying. It's not meant okay. for other things like sure. that. It's turned off right now. Sure, okay. Uh, but um, yeah, that's cool. It's called an Instamic. Nice. And I got it primarily to be able to facilitate being able to record Corey. Got it. When he's doing the Tuesdays with Corey. Well, that works. So, I'm all excited. Very excited. I, I'm glad you're excited. <laughs> I can tell you're just enthused by that. Woo! So anyway, Instamic. Yes. Insta awesome. Nice. That's how small it is. All right. Cool. I need to buy more of them now, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's a problem when you have any technology. Yeah, I need, you need more, more of these. I, I, more than one. Come on. I bought two of these mice. I know. The, what? Yeah. I well, have one for my desk. We should do a, and one Our audio person. guy will have a giveaway. 
of one of the mice. No, we're oh. not having a giveaway. Hey, it's your salary that paid for that, so you might as well because it came through. Came through. We're the not. The, no, offer void in the U.S. Oh. and Canada. <laughs> as we have the too few people around the world. <laughs> yes, it's only coming to us. Only available in the in the island of Malta. The <laughs> Maldives or whatever. The Maldives, yes, Maldives, Maldives. 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 Well, anyways, um, random spend. Uh, random spending, um, other than uh, the mouse, which you can't use because you talked about last time. Talked about it last time. I haven't really random spent much this past week, other than spending on a trip to Utah. Oh yeah. Because <laughs> and a lot of people wonder, oh, I, you know, oh, Microsoft people go to SharePoint. We don't get paid. We don't get anything paid for by Microsoft unless you work for like the SharePoint team, right? I don't get paid to go to Utah, so I had to pay out of my. In fact, I even took Friday off, so I took vacation. That works. And it was awesome. I enjoy myself. Trust me, I do it all. I would do it every single time I can. In fact, I tried to. I know I tried to get in for uh, SharePoint Saturday San Diego, but there were so many speaker, uh, speaker submissions because it was in January, and everybody right. from the north was like, "I want to come south." Nice. Yeah, but uh, unfortunately, I was not selected for Utah so, or uh, for. Uh, San Diego. I've uh, put in for Vancouver, if uh, any of you are in the Vancouver. One of these days, I'll be able to actually see you speak. Actually, April in Vancouver, I've put in. April? So. April. And then May, I'm looking to speak in, um, they actually are calling it Cloud Saturday in uh, the Chicago suburbs. I'm looking to apply Cloud. for that. Wasn't, who was going to Chicago recently? Um, was it Mr. Pilling? It was Mr. Pilling, yes. Dan. Dan. You were sent on a mission to bring back oh, some beverages. I, <laughs> I am expecting those beverages to be in your possession from Revolution Brewing. That's just your PSA because I know you're not watching this right now. Uh, he said he was going to watch it on the replay. Yeah, so make sure you're there, please. Well, so we, uh, I think we're, uh, you know, people should start thinking about uh, work safe words. Yes. Oh, thank you. you. Some guy named Jared just posted that that we yes. should start thinking about work safe words. That's how yes. we name the next episode. It is now. I need to logistically. We need to put the name of the next show someplace where I can see it. I have it in Teams. It's not in Teams. That's yes, the it was history. In teams. That's the history. No, I've I, I updated after the show. I missed one show, and that was the one time you looked in Teams. So <laughs> I do update it right. I'm a after. big believer in Teams. Apparently, yes, exactly. So yeah, so I I went there to look to find out what it was, and, and I don't know what it is. Up and I didn't have it in Teams. Right. So, so that was bad on bad on some bad kind year. of workflow process isn't working. Yes. yes. Well, no, I forgot to put it in Teams. We'll get it. You in know teams. what it is? It's what because is it? it's a process, not a process. That's the and problem. you don't know what I was talking about. Exactly. So, yeah, it would yeah. be nice. Yes. Nice to have. Okay. But we need some work safe words. Work safe words. And, and obviously, this is for the episode for that we're doing for two weeks two from weeks now. Two weeks from now. Uh, and I will do better mm -hmm. uh, at kicking our social media guy yep. or gal. I don't even know who, who, who they are anymore. Well, I thought uh, To make you. sure that they properly create the Facebook item ahead of time so people can schedule it to go off to yep. take a look at them. That'll be on the 23rd, by the way. 23rd of February. Yes. Is that the middle of midwinter break? No, it's not. No, it's after midwinter break. I don't know when I don't have kids. Oh, you don't have kids. So yes. You don't know what that is. So we've got Rickbot. We've got Porter. Nice. Rickbot. Is that where you were? Oh, Gareth, yeah. I could take that. Yep, we'll, we'll take, take that. that. That works. Rickbot, Porter. And, and the third word. Krista Carula, Super Crystal joined. Nice to see you. You're a little bit late. Yep. I guess she has to work. Yeah, no kidding. Great pizza. Oh, Mr. Pilling has joined us now. Nice Great pizza joined. can't count as a word, by the way. That doesn't yeah. work. Do we do, you do have the band somewhere, right? Yes, the, the band is make sure the that, Make sure that the link is up and working between the two rooms here. I've got it. Yeah, I've Get got the it. Band going. I, can, I can point that out to him. You ready? You're here we is it, is go. Is it ready? We don't have a third word yet. Oh, oh. okay. Then we'll wait. Ed, Ed Lukowski the third has suggested BBC. BBC. Is that an acronym count? It could. Oh. oh. They're, they is, started halfway in. Is that it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, it's been a fun time, man. It has. Thank you for stepping up and I'm coming out from behind the, the camera. We should say hello to some of the folks inside the room there. i got to take my glasses off so I can, no, I can read them. Uh, good old Danny P was there. Mr. Jared Sockley, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Uh, Ed Ledowski, welcome. Nice to see you. Danny Pilling again. Krista Kula, Peter Gray. Gareth, good time, my friend. Nice to see you. Uh, Mr. Peter mm -hmm. Gray again. Mr. Nick Legalante had to go off to a meeting. Mr. Marshall, Mitch Garvis. Hey, man, I haven't seen him in a while. Scott Ledwig was joining us there. Uh, come scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Mr. Peter, Peter Gray. I already said Peter Gray. Yeah, you did. And then Pierre Romain, which is kind of the French version of Peter Gray, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, Brian Bourne. Uh, then Mr. Sirowitz. 
Nice to see you. And then my scrolling stops. Yep. Frank Novak was there, there. too. Um, I'm going to go. But hey, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Have a good day. See ya.